This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. And by ICOM. Heard it? Worked it? Logged it. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information about ICOM radios. It's Ham Radio. It's time for another episode of Ham Talk Live. It's number 311, Hamcation 2023 Award Winners. And this was recorded on Monday, January 2nd, 2023. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Today we are joined by Michael Colley, W4ORL, and Mike Bannigan, KJ4UDO, from the Orlando Amateur Radio Club and Hamcation. So we'll speak to them here in just a moment. Uh, last time here on the show, it was uh, Sally Rosado, K2RYD, and Lou Maggio, NO2C. They were here to talk about the 12 Days of Christmas special event. I hope you enjoyed that. I uh, had uh, a lot of fun uh, filling in some of the gaps there on on Kilo 2 Papa. That was kind of fun to operate. And so if you missed that show, you can listen to it anytime at hamtalklive.com or on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. Uh, but tonight we're talking hamcation stuff, and I'll be back with Mike and Mike right after this word from ICOM America right here on Ham Talk Live. Happy New Year from ICOM. Didn't get everything on your wish list? Spice up your ham shack with one of ICOM's popular handhelds, mobiles, or base stations. These radios are perfect for working your favorite bands while staying inside or venturing out this winter. The IC705 is the perfect sidekick and QRP companion. Base station features and functionality at the tip of your fingers in a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. It weighs just over 2 pounds and has RF direct sampling for most of the HF band and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz. It has the 4.3 inch color touch screen with live band scope and waterfall, 5 watts with a battery, 10 watts with a power supply. It does CW sideband AM FM and full D star functions as a micro USB connector, Bluetooth, wireless land, and integrated GPS. And the perfect accessory for your IC705 is the optional backpack with a special compartment for your IC705 and room for accessories. The ID52A is a VHF UHF dual bander with D star and FM dual mode functions, and the first handheld amateur radio with a full color 2.3 inch waterfall display. The radio supports conventional FM and as well as D-Star, Simplex, Repeater, Regional, and Worldwide Calls over the D-Star Internet Gateway. You can even send photos over D-Star with a connected Android device. Other features include a wideband receiver, integrated GPS, micro SD card slot, and IPX7 waterproof. The ID52A is a perfect companion to the IC705. Both use compatible batteries and headsets, and you can use the same Android app for D-Star operation. The IC9700 creates your own band opening. This transceiver brings direct sampling to the UHF VHF weak signal world. The all mode transceiver is loaded with innovative features that are sure to keep you busy. Faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. It has the 4.3 inch color touch screen with live band scope and waterfall, smooth satellite operation with 99 satellite channels, dual watch operation, and full duplex in satellite mode. 
And finally, the IC7300 is a high-performance HF transceiver with a compact design that will far exceed expectations. This transceiver digitizes RF before various receiver stages, reducing inherent noise in different IF stages. The IC7300 changed the way entry-level HF is designed. It has 15 discrete bandpass filters, the large color touch screen and spectrum scope, the real HF fun starts here. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM radios for the love of ham radio. A clean house is a sign of a broken radio. You're listening to Ham Talk Live with Neil Rapp. Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Tonight, Michael Colley, W4ORL, and Mike Bannigan, KJ4UDO, join us on the Orlando Amateur Radio Club and Hamcation Zoom line. Uh, Michael Colley, W4ORL, is the chairman of the Orlando Hamcation. He has also served as the tailgate chairman. That was for seven years, six years as the IT chair. And a year under finance, and of course, Hamcation is sponsored by the Orlando Amateur Radio Club. And also joining us is Mike Bannigan, KJ4UDO. He is the awards chairman of the Orlando Hamcation. He is an engineer and program manager at Lockheed Martin. So, Mike and Mike, welcome back to the show. It's like we're on ESPN again with Mike and Mike. Yeah, thank Neil, you. Thank Glad you for having us tonight. You. Well, we had a double there. But <laughs> well, it's great to be back with you again. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's that time of year when, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, Christmas is over and, and now we're thinking about hamcation and it's, uh, just a few weeks away. And, uh, we want to talk a little bit about what's going on at hamcation. We'll do that a little bit later in the show, but, uh, the first part of the show here, Michael is going to tell us about some of the award winners. And so this is the actual notification to everyone. We've got our breaking news theme. Maybe we should play. But anyway, this is the first announcement of the award winners for 2023 by the Orlando Hamcation. And we're going to start off with the award that's been presented for four years. Um, and that's the Carol Perry Educator of the Year Award. So, uh, Mike, take it away. Well, Neil, thank you very much for having us this evening to be able to turn around and make the uh, award announcements. As you mentioned, uh, we're actually, this will be the fifth award announcement for the Carol Perry Educator of the Year Award. So, um, and this year was a little bit more of a challenge than we've had in the past. We were trying to down select and, uh, the committee finally got to the point where we were uh, going back and forth and we decided this year we are going to have co-recipients for the award. Uh, we've got some excellent candidates that have been out there and, um, this year, the award will be going to uh, Ken Lyons, uh, KN4MDJ, and Jim Storms, AB8YK. So uh, two uh, outstanding individuals that have been contributing uh, to our youth community with uh, out there. Uh, Ken himself has been uh, very involved in the scouting program. He's been uh, involved with the uh, amateur radio for quite a while. They're, they're both uh, individuals are extra class uh uh, licensees, but uh, Ken has been um, within the Central Florida area. If you go into Boy Scouting and talk about amateur radio, you're going to come across Ken one way or the other. Um, but he has turned around and not only just limited to the uh, Central Florida Council, he has worked his way through the Southeast uh, Division, uh, helping and promoting uh, amateur radio through uh, Boys and Girls Scouting programs. An example of his uh, contributions was uh, in the uh, Jamboree on the Air events uh, this last October, uh, he had all four weekends going uh, with that, and they ran close to a 1,000 scouts through the uh, program uh, with that. 
Uh, they, they also run programs uh, for their summer camps where I think they get about 300 uh, youth through the program. And he has established his own website as a resource uh, for the locals and uh, throughout the scouting program. Uh, WB4SA.com is the website he's established to uh, promote amateur radio within scouting there. So then our other big award winner was uh, Jim Storms. Uh, and he's been a team lead for the Dave Coulter Memorial Youth DX Adventure for a number of years here now. And uh, they just had a recent uh, ad- uh, adventure down in Caraco. Um, I think they had three youth on the team, and they made over 8,000 QSOs during the trip, breaking it. It has kind of set a new record for the uh, number of QSOs that they've had within that um, uh, DX Adventure. Uh, for that. So, and the big thing with that is I, I think when we look at the youth that are involved with that DX adventure, they probably would be some of the likely leaders within amateur radio as we uh, look into the future. So, uh, and Jim squeezing that in along with his other activities as being the chairman for the uh, uh, invention show this year. So he's, he's got a full plate and uh, can been contributing, but uh, both of these individuals have been outstanding in what they've been doing to promote amateur radio with youth in our community. So um, it's uh, very thrilled to have both of these participants in there. And Carol was uh, thrilled to see both of them in there. She was uh, like the rest of the committee as we were trying to make the decision uh, torn as far as which of these, how do you, how do you, Give it, give it to one and not the other. You know, great, great individuals. Uh, and uh, as much of a challenge as it was, I'm glad that we've got so many good candidates being nominated for uh, these this award here. So, absolutely. But, yeah. So, well, you've got and, a couple uh, of great ones there. Uh, that's for sure. I, you know, the, a lot of the uh, scouting activities that have been going on. We've we've heard. Uh, uh, gave four SA on the air uh, several times, and uh, know that that's a that's a great thing going on there. And then, of course, Jim, uh, Jim's on my, on my speed dial because <laughs> uh, we coordinate some things between Yoda and YDXA to make sure that we're uh, we're kind of on the same page. We know uh, what's going on and when things are happening, and and compare notes on kids and and. Uh, all that kind of thing. And then, uh, he, like you said, he's taken on, uh, the, uh, Hamvention chair role here for the next couple of years. So, uh, Jim's always, uh, always there to, uh, to take these kids off to, uh, Carousel, Costa Rica, Saba, all kinds of places and had a chance to talk to them, uh, while they were, um, down in Carousel, both on the air and on this program. And, um, so very, uh, very glad to hear both of these, uh, deserving recipients here. So, so tell us a little bit about what, what they will get and how they're going to be, uh, rewarded for their efforts. Oh, what we'll end up doing is, uh, both of these members or, uh, award winners will be, uh, at Hamcation this year. So, uh, verified that they will be on, on site. Uh, so we will, uh, turn around and have a uh, dinner for them are part of our uh, dinner on uh, Saturday night of Hamcation. Uh, that will join us for the dinner, and the awards will be presented at that. So it will be a, um, oh, a glass uh, award, that uh, glass art award that we provide them uh, with their name on it uh, as the Hamcation Award winner. So it's similar to the one that uh, you've received uh, a year ago. So, uh, and uh We'll recognize them as a VIP throughout the uh, Hamcation uh, show this year. So uh, hopefully, it will people will see them around and be able to congratulate them, you know, while uh, while they're at the show attending it. So, so it'll be, uh, and then we'll get uh, some press releases out and get them in a couple of the uh, uh, radio amateur radio publications to uh, turn around and let people be aware of uh, uh, our award winners there. So very good. <laughs> Yeah, it's a beautiful trophy. Uh, it's, it's kind of a flame shaped, uh, trophy and, uh, the, uh, it, it's massive too. <laughs> it's, it's got some weight yeah. to it for sure. Uh, in fact, it was, it was kind of a, kind of a, 
a funny thing. We, you know, you you had asked me when I when I got mine if you wanted uh, wanted it shipped or you know if I or if I was going to take it home with me. And I was like, oh, I'll just take it home with me, and not thinking because I'm not used to being on airplanes that much. And, and they were like, well, wait a minute, this thing could be considered as a weapon. <laughs> but luckily that we got a hold of a TSA agent and he cleared it. He said everything's fine, so we brought it home. But but uh it's a very nice award and, and so I look forward to uh to seeing them uh receive that award. So that's a that's a very cool thing. Um and I'm sorry I know to hear about that challenge getting home. There. <laughs> yeah, it didn't even think about it, and then all of a sudden, uh, that that was a concern. But uh, no, it, it worked out just fine. Um, and I know Carol will, will be uh, excited to to see those people and recognize them uh, for their efforts uh, in um, educating our youth. They uh, they do a fabulous job. We'll see if we can actually get them uh, coordinated so they can make an appearance at uh, Carol's uh, forum uh, with the youth. When, but that would, which would be great to have the award winners there with her. So, absolutely. Well, you've got a new award this year, and it's named in honor of another person who I <laughs> was actually involved in in a. Uh, and a an youth education program with our guest speakers were Carol Perry and Gordon West. And so you have uh, Gordon West uh, as the namesake of the Ambassador of the Year Award. So since this is a new award, tell us a little bit about uh, the award itself. Yeah, this, uh, as you mentioned, it's a, a new award for, uh, for this year. And we're looking to turn around and recognize a, an individual that represents and inspires others and embodies the amateur radio spirit for outstanding contributions to the amateur radio community. So it's, um, you know, I know we got a lot of people that are excited about amateur radio, but we've, we've got some people that just live and breathe amateur radio and promote it in ways that sometimes we don't even realize what's taking place. And um, they're, really our biggest promoters out there. They get people involved in amateur radio. They inform people of amateur radio, about amateur radio that they don't even realize it's out there. Um, and uh, so this year is a brand new award. And the uh, award winner for this one is John Bigley, N7UR. He's in the uh, Nevada area. So uh, he's uh, he's been, he actually was, had, had his license for a number of years, kind of like many people. The amateur radio life for life takes place, and uh, amateur radio kind of takes a back seat for a little time. And uh, ironically, when I was talking to him about it, he told me what got him reinvigorated on it was his wife ended up picking up a Gordon West amateur radio book in the library, <laughs> brought it home. <laughs> and, and she might she might be regretting this, but ever since then he's been. 100% in their amateur radio. And uh, so John's been very, very busy. He's very active. He's uh, with numerous clubs and um, within the uh, Nevada area, or I should say the Southwest area. But he's also uh, involved, heavily involved with ARL. He's uh, in the uh, Nevada section and in the Pacific Division. He uh, holds positions in that. Actually, he holds a position in the uh, Southeast Division, too. So one of the few people that actually do that. But uh, John, is, uh, he created a one-day uh, basic training boot camp type thing that I've uh, seen some other amateur radio clubs make use of. He goes to multiple shows. He is, uh, while doing that, he's made several appearances as, um, as Elvis, Bald Elvis. Uh, let's see, Professor Elmer, Spark Gap. Captain Coax, just to name a few of the um, <laughs> way, ways he turns around and presents himself at some of the shows. So uh, he definitely turns around and makes it uh, entertaining. Uh, he's, he gets involved in, you know, youth groups and stuff like that, promoting SEM. Uh, he's gone out to uh, homeowners, homeowners associations to explain to them about amateur radio and how antennas could turn around and fit in with their community and, aren't always a, 
you know, when somebody says amateur radio, it doesn't always have a negative connotation with, uh, with antennas there. So finding ways to make things work. So uh, he's got a long list of things, and it sounds like just about every weekend is he's involved in some activity with associated with amateur radio. So, uh, you know, when you looked at the list of things he, he's been doing and uh, supporting, whether it be a group or an in- individual, I got one letter that came in about a um, uh, individual that was uh, uh, vision impaired. And he made comment, you know, John turned around and without asking, turned around and came in and started giving him a hand. So what can we do to help you out? So uh, that's, you know, uh, from that perspective, he's truly an ambassador for amateur radio and promoting our, our hobby throughout the community. So it's uh, pleased to, to have John as the, the award winner. And it uh, looks like we, uh, things are lining up. He should be able to make it out to uh, Hamcation. And the same evening where we uh, present the awards for the uh, Carol Perry Educator of the Year, we'll be presenting the uh, Gordon West Ambassador of the Year Award to uh, John. Look forward to uh, having him out at uh, Hamcation here. All right. So some great uh, awards winners here. So congratulations to all three of those award winners and i know they will uh, in- enjoy the uh, the dinner and all the uh, the hoopla associated with it and, and their uh, and their trophies as well so mike thanks for being here to <laughs> talk about these award winners and uh look forward to seeing you here at hamcation in just a few weeks and again thank you for allowing us the opportunity to make the award announcements here on your show All right. Well, don't go away because coming up next, we have more news about Hamcation. Michael Colley, W4ORL, will be here, and he's going to tell us the latest news about what's uh, happening with Hamcation. So you can uh, get ready to go uh, for that event here coming up in about uh, five, six weeks here. So uh, I'll be back with Mike and Mike right after this word from Tower Electronics, right here on Ham Talk Live. His two cents is worth $37 in change. He once ran a marathon because it was on his way to Dayton. He works FT8 by ear. He once worked North Korea on every band in one minute using only a microwatt. He slowed down his code speed to work a de-expedition to 200 words a minute. He is, indeed, the most interesting ham in the world. I don't always put on my own PL259s, but when I do, I prefer them from Tower Electronics. Stay resident, my friends. Tower Electronics has all the adapters, cables, connectors, and yes, PL259s you need at a ham fest near you or visit pl-259.com. And on the Tower Electronics Hamfest schedule, January 20th and 21st, they'll be in Fort Myers, Florida, January 28th, Arcadia, Florida, and then they'll be at Hamcation, February 10th, 11th, and 12th, and Dalton, Georgia on February 25th. Or visit them anytime at pl-259.com. You're listening to Ham Talk Live, the number one podcast amongst the podcasts with the words ham, talk, and live in the title. Here's your host, Neil Rapp. And welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Hey, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We do uh, post some things there from time to time about uh, the show. So 
Be sure to take a look at that, as well as some other ham radio assorted stuff. So it's all there on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just look for Ham Talk Live. Well, we're going to talk more about hamcation, but right now it's time for the N9 GSU Joke of the Week. Now it's time for the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week, the part of the show where Rick tells us a ham radio joke. The Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week is brought to you by QRM Labs. Now, here's Rick Garrett in 9 GSU with today's Ham Talk Live Joke of the Week. I was in Florida over the holidays and went out on a boat to do some activations as I was operating from the boat. Somebody else in the boat came up and asked me if I knew why sharks were only found in salt water. I said, well, of course. Pepper water makes them sneeze. This has been the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week with Rick Garrett in 9 GSU. Tune in again next week for another joke from Rick. And welcome back to Ham Talk Live. We're with Michael Colley, W4ORL, and uh, he's the chairman of the Orlando Hamcation. And you have a lot of uh, news here of, of new things that are happening with Hamcation. So we're going to run down a few of those, uh, Michael. So first of all, I know uh, you're excited to have some new vendors this year. Um, we are. Uh, for the first time ever, uh, we've been in contact with Bigali Keys. Uh, they're actually coming over from Italy uh, to set up a booth here at Hamcation for the first time. Um, also for the first time here is going to be ADSB Exchange. They are a uh, flight software where you can uh, track planes. Um, so their first time coming here also. Another one uh, is Rabbit Laser USA. Um, everybody should know them from uh, Hamvention. They're the ones that... Uh, actually engrave the cups um, there at Hamvention with your call sign and stuff like that on them. So they're going to be a first-time vendor here also. Uh, we have lots more, uh, probably about a total of 10 total new vendors coming, uh, but those are some of the uh, bigger ones that we wanted to um, let everybody know that they will be here. All right, and uh, some vendors that have been there uh, but are sponsoring. Talk about your bronze sponsor this year. Uh, we do. Uh, DX Engineering has come on as a bronze sponsor again this year. Uh, they did it last year also. They are coming on as uh, a bronze sponsor, and we'll be donating uh, prizes to us for that. All right. Very good. I'm sure uh, Tim and the crew will be uh, ready to, to greet everyone there at Hamcation, and uh, thanks to them for sponsoring. And then you also have a platinum sponsor to announce. Uh, we do. Uh, ICOM America has come on as a platinum sponsor, and they will actually be sponsoring our grand prizes on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, we partnered with them this time with something a little different for the grand prizes. Instead of just having radios, uh, they're actually going to be grand prize packages. Uh, so on Friday's grand prize will be an ICOM ID52A. It will come with a speaker mic, actually come with also a VS3 Bluetooth headphones, uh, come with a drop-in rapid charger, and an extra lithium ion battery. So that will be the grand prize package for Friday. And then for Saturday, it gets even better. Saturday will be a ICOM IC705. It will also have the remote control software with it. It will come with the ICOM AH705 tuner. You'll also get the LC192 backpack with it. And we're also adding the AL705 loop antenna. So a whole package for the 705. Get you out doing POTA if you want to. That's an excellent POTA radio right there. And for our Sunday grand prize will be an ICOM IC7610. It will come with the remote control software also. It will come with the SP41 base speaker. It also will come with the SM50 desktop mic. So that will be Sunday's grand prize. Another whole setup 
and all this is uh, donated by ICOM America. All right. So some great ICOM gear being uh, given away here at Hamcation. And uh, thanks to them for being a, a platinum sponsor here of the show. Now, you also have a, a prize list here that, that's ever-growing, so tell everybody about the prizes. Uh, the prizes right now, uh, if everybody goes to hamcation.com, if they look under the prize list, uh, this week it will be updated with all this information will go up on it. Uh, and we have lots of more prizes already been donated. Uh, so this week we'll get everything up there on the website. Uh, so everybody knows the great prizes that we will be giving out this year. And and similar for the forums, you're, you're finalizing that uh, forums list soon. Correct. Uh, this week, that will uh, go up live also uh, with the first preliminary uh, forums list. Uh, it is subject to change uh, for more than anything scheduling purposes, uh, but we will get that up this year. Uh, one thing different this year, we are not going to actually have four tenths of forums. We're only going to have two. Uh, we downsized a little bit on the forums. Um, what we're doing is getting the better forums this time. Uh, so some of the ones that wasn't drawing many people in them, uh, we're trying to, uh, just get the real good technical forum stuff that people attend and really going after, uh, what pulls the audience. Um, so, but we will have an area set up actually out in the forums area, the pavilion where the two tents are, um, uh, that will be set up with tables and chairs on one side. So for the ones that do draw a smaller crowd, uh, it will be open that people can go out there and use the tables and chairs and do their own little meetings and forums uh, unofficial that away also. Very good. And I know we've talked a little bit about uh, the, the Yoda uh, forum, and, and we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, so, uh we won't be having a forum, but instead we're going to have the the Yoda Youth Zone, uh, and we'll have that av- available for um, all the young people who attend Hamcation. Uh, correct. Uh, it will actually be located right across from uh, ARRL. Uh, so it's actually going to be Yoda, and actually Boy Scouts of America will have a booth right next to it. So one whole side will be nothing but youth activities. Yeah, so we'll have the uh, the youth zone open for youth to kind of have a, a hangout during hamcation, a place to meet, and uh, and then on Saturday uh, around uh, lunchtime, I believe it is, we're going to have some some snacks and drinks and things for all the youth who are there on Saturday over by the youth on the air booth. So uh, that's going to be another uh, another change here. So we do have uh, an area for the youth to. Uh, Kind of hang out, meet each other, and and see each other, um, as well as uh, knowing each other from the radio. So uh, we're excited about uh, about that change. All right, Michael. Well, anything else that we need to cover here before we go tonight? Uh, one other thing I do have, I almost forgot about mentioning this. Um, on Wednesday night, uh, February 8th, we will be doing a kit build again um, at 6 p.m. in our swaps building uh, with Joe Eisenberg. Um, he will be coming in to do a kit build. Uh, there is information on the website. If you go to hamcation.com slash events, there is a spot there to... Uh, Send an email to kitbuild at hamcation.com and register or reserve your uh, space for the kit build. It is limited to around 25 people. Uh, but if you are coming to Hamcation early and you want to do a kit build with Joe, um, please go there and uh, reserve your spot. Okay, and we should probably mention uh, housing and things as well. You've got a lot of new um RV sites, uh, well, that were added last year. Um, so how are the RV registrations going and then the uh, hotels? RV registrations are going very well. Uh, right now, I believe we're around 160 already reserved, uh, which is really good. Uh, we can fit over 200, so there's plenty of spaces left. So if you go on the website under Attending Hamcation, uh, you can reserve your spots there and pay for them. Uh, hotels, 
Also on the same page as attending Hamcation, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there is a list of hotels that we have got special rates at. Uh, so please go up there, make your reservation or reservation at the hotels. Um, a lot of them do have a certain book by date to get that price. So, and some of them starting beginning of January toward the end of the January, depending on the location. Uh, so please go up there. If you haven't made your reservation yet, please do so before you lose out on the special pricing we have. Yeah, I know uh, when I went to do it, there were a couple that were already filled up with the the special pricing and I uh, was able to find a really nice deal, but uh, wasn't my first choice. So, you know, make sure you, you make those reservations. But uh, the, the price break it was was uh, really good on a couple of these. Yeah, I think they range pretty much from about $89 up to about 150 depending on where you want to stay at. Yeah, so that, that's some good rates. And that's part of the uh, advantage of being in Orlando when you have hotels everywhere. <laughs> you can get some that is true. pretty good deals on, on uh on the hotels and making that more affordable to attend hamcation. So that's always great. All right. Well, Mike, uh, did you think of anything here uh, before we go that, uh, that you want to slip in here? Just one more congratulations to our award winners to, to Jim, Ken and uh, John. So yeah, look forward to seeing them all. Them. So. All right. Yeah, that'll be great. All right, well, that's uh, the latest from Hamcation and your award winners for 2023. So, again, congratulations to all uh, three award winners, and I uh, look forward to seeing you here in a few weeks. Yeah, uh, good to talk to you tonight, Neil. And, uh, yes, uh, about, I think, as of a couple nights ago, I counted it when I did an article for our uh, local um, club newsletter. We're at 41 days, so we're probably about – 35 now so yeah it's coming won't be long (laughs) it won't be long and your phone will be ringing off the wall so uh that'll be but uh, looking forward to being there uh again uh and and hopefully no food poisoning this time so so hopefully no food poisoning uh (laughs) cold cold weather up there with y'all yes yes well it was it was uh 61 degrees today up here. It's kind of weird. It was just negative oh. 9, negative 10. Not long well, we're, we're warming back up from the cold front that give us 20s and 30s last weekend. Uh, yeah. So, or a week ago. Now we're back. I think today probably hit about 80. Yeah. It's been, it's been a crazy winter so far. So, uh, it has. We'll try to keep that up here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. All right, well, Bill, thanks thank so much. Thanks so much for being here. And that is a wrap for this edition of Ham Talk Live. I'd like to thank my guests, Michael Colley, W4ORL, and Mike Banigan, KJ4UDO, and everyone out there in cyberspace for listening. And invite you all back next time. Uh, for a list of all of our upcoming guests, go to hamtalklive.com. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, saying 7375, and may the good DX be yours. For 73, to you and your family, I'll be seeing you further down the law. Your 73, to you and your family. I'll be seeing you further down the log. It's hard to believe that you're anti Odin, cause you sound just like a local up here. But why don't those whistling Mediterraneans check it with green?